My voice is kind of different this morning. Oh, I almost bit it there. <laughs> oh, thanks for the cough drop, somebody. That's awesome. Hey, we're going to, um, before we get started uh, it, with the word this morning, um, we, might, we might sing at the end, too. Just probably. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we... Sometimes I love how the Bible says that we enter his courts with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter his courts, you know, he says with praise, right? And so I think maybe we built church services in a sense based off of that verse, right? Maybe, kind of. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, sometimes it's good to hear what the Father says or what the Lord would say to you so that you could respond. Because sometimes when we come in... <coughs> And we want to have some things to say to the Lord. We have, it's hard for us really to enter the conversation and maybe sing the song that's being sung. Or the song of your heart might not be one um, that would put you in a place above. And you'd almost have to move yourself. You'd have to, you, God it would take this, in a sense, this time and God's so good about taking this time and getting this, you know, get, but I'll tell you what, there's something about a song or a declaration, a declaration, like even this morning, Lord, we love you. But how many of you know you can sing a song, but you can, you can declare your love when you know, right? When you really know what you're saying, Father, I love you because you see how much he's loved you. You see how poor he is. He see all those, all those things. And so, Anyway, um, oh, so good. That was just so good. Presence of God is so good this morning. Hey, before we switch gears, I wanted to take a moment, and um, we're going to do this in both services, but if we have, we're going to pray over our, our student, any students that we have in here, and, and those in the back, but also our, especially our faculty. So if you'll stand, we have uh, a lot of teachers, we have a lot of coaches uh, that go to beyond, and if you'll stand, and we're going to just, um, we're going to, then we'll stick, kind of stand around you in a moment. Um, but let's just look around who we got. We got teachers. We got faculty. Look at all these people representing our schools. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! Huh? Uh, <clears throat> and, and students, if you'll stand, if you're a student, you can stand. Um, I wanted to give you, um, just if you'll stay standing for a moment, uh, and then we'll stand around them in a moment. But I wanted to give a testimony um, of what's already been happening in our schools uh, this year in, in, in our grade school uh, since Wednesday or Thursday and Friday. Uh, there's been 24 kids that have received Jesus from kids just going around, right? I mean, and so you've been placed there on purpose. You've been placed there on purpose, and, um, and, and you, you truly are, as it says in Matthew, you're the salt of the earth, you're the light of the world, a city set on a hill, you're, you've set there on purpose. And... Um, and I, I'm just, we're just so thankful for the roles that you're playing in our schools and for the children that are going forth and carrying the love of God that's in their heart to others. And we will just believe that for you this year, that not only would God take care of you, but the love of God would flow from you in ways that you never, uh, to kids that they've never, you never thought was possible, that, that, that they would experience him. And so, um, let's just, uh, all those you can see who's around you, go ahead and stand up, and we're just going to reach our hands towards these guys. These, Thank you, Father. We just come together this morning in agreement over their steps and the plans that you have for them this year. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. Father, I thank you that, 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 that what comes out of them is just a picture of your perfect love, that your goodness and your kindness that, and your mercy that chases them down, Father, that it would just, it would overflow from them this year, that in that place that they, that people would come to know you, not just having heard, but have experience. I thank you that these teachers, these students, these all faculty and coaches, that they would come to know you in a greater way as they come to know your love more and more and more. So, Father, pour out your love in them and on them today. Order their steps. We speak strength and wisdom to teach, to impart, 
Father, sharpen, sharpen the words of their mouth, that they would impress them, not just on their ears, but, but deposits into the hearts of children, of young people. I thank you that they're just, they're, they're set there to, to set core, help set courses. So we just come together in agreement for those that their eyes would see, uh, that they'd have just, they'd walk in the spirit of wisdom in their classroom. That they would have discernment of what's going on. That they would see, even you said, just the gifts of the Spirit. I thank you that they're in operation in these teachers. That they would see. And they would speak into a child's life. And they would, and and that's what it is. It's you being used by God to bring help, a gift of the helper. Speak in life, releasing that. In Jesus' name, we do that this morning. We partner with them. We call them blessed. Thank you for great things this year. In Jesus' name. Go ahead. I had a verse that came to me um, for you. It's 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be firm, steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always being superior, excelling, doing more than enough in the service of the Lord, knowing and being continually aware that your labor in the Lord is not futile, it is never wasted or to no purpose. And so just to encourage you faculty, students, you're doing a work of the Lord, every one of us is, but specifically today as we covered you, I just heard those words so clearly, be steadfast and immovable. And um, something we've been talking about that I just want to encourage you to, really all of us, but the love of God is a powerful thing. And the love of God, it says Jesus, he, he was filled with the love of God, but he was also moved with compassion. He was bold with what God had given him. You see, the, the disciples, the key word I feel like in Acts is boldly. And there's something about being bold with what you've been given. Being bold. The the Holy Spirit, I just believe it. The Holy Spirit's going to give you words. He's going to give you phrases. He's going to give you connections. He's going to give you things. And it's our job to respond to that. What can we do? We can cower in fear and hold it in, or we can be bold. And did you know that boldness is a good thing? But did you know boldness alone won't do it? What does it have to be from the motive, from the heart of love? So that love of God should compel me to be bold with those I work with, bold with my students, bold with whoever. What? Because it's that compassion, it's that love that says, I don't want to see you stay where you're at. So I got to give you, like these kids, uh, we just got testimony every day. My, my son was a part of one of them, and he got in the car, and he said, it's so easy. It's just so easy. You just go up, and it's just so easy. And you know what? What if we as adults took that? It's so easy. Quit saying it's hard. Quit saying it's hard to follow God. Quit saying it's hard to do what he asks you to do. It's easy. It's easy for me because the love of God's been shed abroad in my heart. Therefore, I can be bold with what he's given me. Amen? Okay. Amen. There's more for you. Oh, oh, oh. that's okay. I, I know what it says. Um. <laughs> There's more for you than that are against you. You know, sometimes we think um, we're we're set, like we're the only one, but we're not. Matter of fact, God is working, and and I just would encourage you. um, When she was talking, that just came to my heart pretty strong. I would encourage you with this uh, this verse, um, Acts eighteen ten, that God has many people in this city. You know, we shared that on on Tuesday. I, we had a marriage prayer luncheon, which was awesome. And the Lord just gave me that verse uh, real clearly that morning. For not looking for it, it was in my reading. Right? He said, "Hang in there a little longer." And and I came. That was where I ended up. And I was like, "Wow, the Lord has many people in this city." Let me tell you, the Lord has many teachers in those schools. It's not just those ones that are represented here. He has, and so I would just encourage you partner together. Realize that realize this that you're not alone in your stand But God is working God is working. Aren't you glad you serve a big God? That he's that my ability is not his limits Amen, amen, so um, Praise the Lord. Well, hey, it's good to be in church. <clears throat> I can't believe that I have um, 
a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, something going on here. Just kind of tried to come on a couple days ago. Um, here's some kids tags. Um, sorry. Uh, I don't, anyway, hey, you ready to hear, hear the word this morning? Okay, so um, this is a little different kind of message I, where I thought I was going to go or whatever. But um, I, I want you to throw up that picture. And I want to, <clears throat> this is how I want to approach this whole message. Is not so, have you ever um, heard somebody say this? Uh, that picture, it kind of looks pixelated, but do you know what's actually on that? Can anybody tell me what that picture is? Footsteps. The footstep picture I actually have was the one from this picture called Footprints. Anybody ever remember this one? As a kid, we had this picture in a, I, I believe it was a gold or brass frame. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Come on. And it was... It was footprints, the title of the, ca- uh, on the, it was a poem and there was this picture of the footprints along the sand looking uh, uh, along the edge of a beach. It was the, and, and I remember reading that poem many times as a kid uh, and talking about how, um, you know, I, I, I look back over my life and it seemed like, Lord, and this guy's talking to the Lord and he said, Lord, it seems like in the hardest moments of my life, it's... Um, I see that you were walking with me, but when I look back, the hardest moments of my life, there's only one set of footprints. What's the deal? And the Lord said, well, it was in, it was in those moments that I, I carried you. And <clears throat> it's, it's a special thing, right? So to think that way. But there's two, two ways um, I want to, so I want you to see like footprints in the sand, right? I want you to see and imagine your walk with God. And I want you to um, <clears throat> see th- this morning's message in, in two ways. When I want you to hear, hey, uh, walk with me, like walk with him, as in, hey, have you ever had somebody, um, I'm, I'm pretty famous for this, something's going on, and, and you, somebody kind of maybe T-bones you in, in, into what's happening, and you like, you really want to connect with them too, but you have to get here because you're, you're, and so you say, hey, walk with me, right? Hey, walk with me. Let's talk. Let's connect on the way. Let's, let's, keep, the, let's keep this going, yeah. right? Because you're just as valuable, right, as, as the thing that is coming, right? But hey, walk with me. And, some, and I, I, so I want to I talk like that, like the Lord would say to you, hey, hey, walk with me. But then I'll, I would like to, so he's there talking, but I'd also like to coin, coin it like this, that, that he set you and I here on this earth, Right? And we're, we're Jesus' hands, we're Jesus' feet. And so I would want to remind you that he would say, walk with me, like carry me. Like everywhere you go, right, everywhere you walk, make sure you're walking with me. Make sure that you, make sure that, that w- when you encounter <clears throat> somebody, that, that the limit to the possibilities is not your ability. Make sure that you remember that you're walking with me. That you can walk with me. And so uh, this morning I just wanted to talk about um, just what, what would he say if he said walk with me. This is kind of, I didn't really have a title because I just heard the Lord reiterating to me um, <clears throat> something found in Galatians chapter 3. And I want to start actually by putting up uh, Hebrews 11.6. And so this is really more, more than a teaching. Um, when, you, when you hear somebody say, hey, walk with me, they don't have three points, Right? I don't, have, I don't have three points this morning. I don't have things that rhyme, okay? But I have a conversation, okay? There's a conversation that, that I've been having, and I just would say, hey, walk with me, and let's have a conversation, or, or let's have this conversation that I think the Lord would want to have with all of us, and if we were to walk with him down the road, maybe it would be a Sunday, a Sunday afternoon stroll. There would be some things that were imparted, and more than anything, I think you would catch the Father's heart. This is what <clears throat> my prayer for this morning would be, that let's catch the Father's heart this morning. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word this morning. But we thank you for the work of your spirit that, that is a teacher, that shows us. Uh, Father, thank you for th- this morning. We would catch your heart like never before as we, we just walk with you this morning. And we give you honor in this place. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6. It says this, now without faith, help me out. 
without faith, it's impossible to please him, to please God. For he that comes to God must believe what? That he exists and that he, be, that he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. A quick, a KJV. Everything's in KJV. They asked me that this morning. Just I'm going to quote from what I know, and I don't know a whole lot of NIV just because I grew up, and my, all my Bibles are still, are still this. I mean, I like going to other ones because I say good things, but I still end up here. All right? <clears throat> but he says, he says this. He says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And, and if you're going to come to him, you must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Let me, I want to talk to you this morning about what pleases God. If he'd say, this pleases me, like you were on this, we're on this walk, he said, hey, this pleases me. You know what pleases God? It pleases God to reward you. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He, it says this, it says that he is a reward, uh, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And without, without faith, it's, it's impossible to uh, get he, what, what he wants to get to you, for him to get it to you without your playing a part. Did you know we play a part? And it's my will. It's my will. It's my will. So I wanted to hit a hit on this piece and how, how much God, uh, he, wants, he wants you and me, um, he wants to, he wants to re, be a, a rewarder to us. He, it's the Father's heart, and, and I, I, I don't know if, if you were here when we talked about this, um, but I've, I've mentioned it quite a bit lately in a lot of my conversations, just about the Father's heart when he says, um, it, when you see the parable um, uh, of the talents, and, and one of them, or two of them, steward them well, and both of them got the same reward. Then he said, um, you've been faithful over little. Now let me make you ruler over a little more. Is that what it said? No. Over much. So both of them got the same reward. So we know that God is always about our increase. Matter of fact, from the very beginning, he said, be fruitful and multiply. He, he, wants, he, wants, he is an increased-minded God. Just look at the way he made heaven, all right? But he's an increased-minded increase mind of God and he says be fruitful he says be he says uh, multiply but I don't even know what I was talking about I just totally had one of those like woo here we went help me out where was I just at what was I talking about oh yeah God's a rewarder thank you see where would we be without the body right all right God's a rewarder and he wants to get things to you he wants to get things to me he, he, he so, so desires that. What does it look like for him to get those things to me? He, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's, and this is what he would talk to us about, is, is how the rewards come. How the rewards come. Because um, he, here's kind of how he would talk to us, is if you went to Galatians chapter 3, it starts out by saying this. And I don't think this is how he talked to us in the moment when he was on a Sunday walk. He wouldn't say, oh, you fools. But he'd say, um, I got something I want to talk to you about. I got something I want to talk to you about. It pleases me to make you ruler over much. It pleases me, and here's the reward that you would enter into the joy of the Lord. There's something that pleases a father's heart, and that is to see his child prosper more than anything else. There is nothing that, <clears throat> if your kid's playing football, you want to see your child do something. If, if it's, if whatever, you want to see your child succeed. You want to see your child be given that pair of shoes that he really desires. And, and if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, he says, does our Father in heaven know how to give good gifts, right? He is a good gift giver. So good. And so he wants to bring these things to, into our life. He so desires to, to give good gifts. He is a good, good father. But what's been, there's a hang up here, Hebrews eleven six. 6, without faith, it's impossible, there's a, there's a linchpin. A lot of times, there's a, a disconnect from what God desires to do, right, and, and, and what, um, what he's able to do. And it, this, the linchpin, oftentimes, is, is how we believe. And so here's what he would say, hey, uh, I want to have a conversation, hey, you know, I want to talk with you about something. 
as we're walking here. I want to talk to you about you walking here on this earth and being the advertisement <clears throat> for me because here I am. Here I am in you on this earth. I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about the things that your heart desires and, and the things that you would really desire and, and want and, and, and what, where the, where the hang-up has been. And so there's, he says this in Galatians chapter 3. This is Paul writing to a church. That's us. Okay. We are the church if, if you've if you received Christ. So we know that if, if there's correction that's brought from God through the word to the church, how many of you know that that could still be happening today? Like, in other words, that the way that we think and the way that we would approach God, sometimes as a church, we might even get a little bit off, right? And thank God for his word because his word will always bring us back. His, his word will always hold us Hold us to the, the place. His word is the rock. That's the foundation which we build everything on. And if, if we begin to build off the word, guess what? It, it, it'll topple. So let's hang to the word. And he says this. He says, <clears throat> oh, you foolish Galatians. <laughs> Let me turn here in my Bible real quick. He says, oh, you foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? You could say, who's put a spell over you to change? Who? Wh wh how do you, why did you start to think this way? He says, and, and we're going to hang in Ephesians chapter, or not Ephesians, Galatians chapter 3, and this is kind of more like a, a teaching message, all right? <clears throat> he says, hey guys, there's, um, there's, there's a way that you, that you were thinking, but there's a way that you're thinking now, and it's wrong. It's actually, um, it's a product of an outward force. Who has bewitched you? Who has, thro what, what's happened? What's happened? It goes on to say this, verse 2. He says, um, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to read, uh, try to kick, uh, you don't have all the verses with you, so here's verse 1. Oh, you foolish questions. Who's bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth and crucified among you. What's going on? He says you, you, that you're not obeying the truth. And this is where we hang up a lot of times. Hey, how come you're not obeying? How come you, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? Just keep on going here. Um, verse 3. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, that you're now going to be made perfect by the flesh? Here, this whole passage here, he's going to talk to them about <clears throat> what God wants to do and what he's made available to you and how to receive it. Okay? And how to receive it. All right? And so he says, you... You, are, are you so foolish that you began one way and now you think it's going to go back a different way? Like, God's not double-minded. Jesus is the way. That's what they're saying, he's saying here. It, it's, it's by Jesus. It's through Jesus. And, and what you desire is going to come by the Spirit. Your performance, my performance, is not the key to God's blessing in my life. That's what he would tell me. That's what he'd tell me on this walk. Hey, bud, <clears throat> your performance has never been and is not now. Is not now uh, the key to you receiving my kindness. While you were yet a sinner, I sent Jesus. But you've You've gotten over into this, this thought that you can't approach me because of what you've done. And so because, or because of what you've done, you can't ask. Or because of whatever's going on, um, your, your faith is shaken. And so actually what's happened is there wasn't really any faith there to begin with. Because faith is God's word. And somehow we've entered a conversation with ourself instead of a conversation with our Father. And a lot of our conversations in the church as of late have been with ourself and not with the Father. We talk about how we feel. You know, God's, when he says certain things, his word says things, and, and my response is to come in line with what he says, right? It just come into agreement. This is how, this is how, this is how God gets his this is how God gets blessed, the blessing in my life, by me coming under what he says. It's that simple. 
by me just coming under and, and, and saying, you know what, I'm, I'm going to choose to believe I'm what you say. Yeah. All right? Um, let's keep going here. He says, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit um, that you're going to now be made first, perfect in the flesh? Let me just um, pause for a moment and let's, let me say this. What you're looking for <clears throat> in all of life is found in the spirit. You ever, have you ever had a gar- done a garden and you like early spring, you go to the store and they have these cardboard things with all these different pictures on them and inside these pictures, what's in there of all like flowers and what, what's in there? Street, right. So if you plant that seed, what they're declaring to you is that you get that image, right? Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 23 tells us now the fruit of the spirit is love. Anybody looking for love? Huh? Let's put it up here. Uh, Galatians 5, 22. Uh, 22 and 23. It says, now the fruit of the Spirit is... Okay, so, so anybody looking for some joy? How about any guys? Maybe it's not just guys because I just, I've heard a lot of ladies. Get over here. I'm going to whoop your butt. You know, so it's not just guys. They need some gentleness, <laughs> right? I used to, used to think it was girls that were gentle and guys were kind of rough. No, I've seen a lot of <laughs> girls that need some gentleness. How about some patience? Anybody need some patience? And I'm not just talking about being patient with your kids. I'm talking about being in the race still. Yeah. Anybody need to still be in the race yeah. for what you believe God for or what you ask God for? You know how that's going to come? Plant that seed. You plant the seed. You plant the seed. What I'm here to tell you this morning is, it, it more than anything else, is, is to get where you're going, right? Or to, to, to the, the things in your heart that your heart desires to fulfill, your purpose to end up where you were created to end up, you're going to have to walk with me. You're going to have to walk with him. You're going to have to walk with him. Why? Because when you walk with him, guess what's going to happen? You're going to talk with him. And when you talk with him, when you, what I'm talking about more than any, anything is this, you having conversations with the Father. I'm talking about you having conversations with the Lord. Right here. He is this. You having conversations with him. And you know, a lot of times we think that we're having conversations with the Lord, but if we realize, have you ever been on a phone call, heard somebody on a phone call, and, and they're talking, but you didn't know who was on that phone call, but because of the way that they were talking, you go, oh, was that so-and-so? Right? Oh, was that so-and-so? Let me ask you this. Inspect your conversation. Oh, who are you talking to? Oh, was that the devil? <laughs> You were just talking to the devil about what you didn't have, about how it's not going to work out, about how they're turning out like hellions, about how this, about this, about this. So who are we talking? Oh, were you, on the, were you just on the phone call with the devil? Were you just talking with the devil? Was that, was that with him? Or are you having a conversation with the Lord? You're having a conversation with the Lord. Because I'll tell you, what happens is, is who you're talking to, you'll end up coming into agreement with. This is why the, the Lord is, is says, guard your heart. Guard your heart. What, maybe we've talked to our kids about this. Show me the sum total of your five closest friends, and that's who you are. Yeah. The sum, at average, right? right. Uh, and so we talk about uh, pick your friends wisely. Why? Because you're going to, right? But the Bible teaches this, all right? So who are you talking to? They guard your heart, Proverbs 4 tells us. Because out of that flows the pathway of our life. How do you guard your heart? What do you put before your eyes and what you put in your ears? Right? Okay, let's keep going here. So <clears throat> he says this. Have, um, having begun in the spirit, are you now going to be made perfect by the flesh? Nope. Nope, you're not. Um, <clears throat> let's go to verse uh, 6. Can you hang with me on that quick, Matt? I'm going to just try. Okay, cool. He says... Um, <clears throat> He's, oh, no, no, let's go back to verse five, 5. He therefore that ministered among you or to you, he therefore that ministered to you, the Spirit, worked miracles among you. So even the things that you need in your life that are not within your power, 
Guess how they're going to come? My spirit. And then you know what it's going to be? If I just do this, if I just do this, if I just do this. No, it's going to be by the spirit. By, let me just say it as simple as this. By you hearing what the Father said. That, that simple. There's no formula. There's no, let me reiterate that. There's no formula to seeing what you desire in your life. There's not a formula. There is a walk. There is a walk with. If you want to see, maybe there's a certain person you you really believe in God for or, or, or concerning this. What does God say? Say in that conversation, what will happen is what'll, you'll have the patience, right, to stay in a place of not worry, right, to hear what God is saying. And therefore, maybe just you, he might even use you to deposit something there that can bring life. Or he might just have you on the outside to where you don't foil it and ruin it. While God's at work taking care of that, you're taking care of something else, right? You take care of his business, he takes care of yours. Just by simply walking with him, by hearing and entering his conversation, a conversation with him, he's going to take and he's going to do those miracles among you. The miracles that you desire in your life, that would be what is, uh, is beyond you or human ability, a miracle. It is found in walking with him. Silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, so we're, we're, that was every day. Every day they walk by that guy. But today, God said this. Okay? So, <clears throat> let's keep going here. He says, work miracles among you. Does he that, did he do it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. He, uh, Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing God speak. So he said that the miracles were done simply by hearing what God was saying. Let me present this to you. There are things in your life that God wants you to know. And I wrote, I wrote it down like this, that he wants you to know that, um, <clears throat> I want to say it just right, because that his ability, he says, he says um, my ability is, he doesn't want my ability to be the linchpin to all that he desires to do. He is, as you walk with him, hey, walk with me. Hey, walk with me on this earth. This is that other piece, not with him as in conversation, but with him as in he's with you. He's resting. He lives in you. He rests upon you. Hey, hey walk with me. What God desires to do here on this earth, he wants you to know your ability is not the limit. But it will be so long as you don't walk by the Spirit. What does that mean? So long as you aren't entering the conversation or hearing by faith. On your job, there's things that your ability, man, like where you got to go is here, and your ability is about right here. What God desires for you, where he's, the things that he's planned for you is here, and your natural ability is right here. So how do I get beyond my ability? By faith. By, by, by faith, by, by entering that conversation with the Father, He knows how to get or get those things to you. Listen, let me tell you, it pleases Him. These things, there's a lot of things that, that as you, and especially as you spend time with the Lord, He places these desires in your heart, and He placed those desires there because He wants you to ask for them, and He wants you to show Himself strong on on, on your behalf. He wants you to know that he is bigger than you and he's able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all you could ever think or imagine. He wants you to know that. He, he would tell you if he was walking with you, hey, I want to do it bigger and, and, and beyond what you could even comprehend. Listen, but how to get there, the miracles, is not by works if I just try it harder. Listen, it is by hearing by faith. It is by hearing God speak. Oh, I just don't know if I hear God speak. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I struggle to hear God's, God's voice. I just don't know when he, he's talking. Let me just tell you this. That's one, of the, <clears throat> that's one of the ploys of the enemy is to get you to think you hear God here. You don't hear God here. You hear God here. And so even, even now, you're hearing things that didn't come out. You're hearing things here that I did not speak today. Concerning, I did not talk to you about that situation in your life. 
The Holy Spirit took the truth of God's word that came out of my mouth, and he said it applies here too. You just heard God speak. Stop saying you don't. Because what you're doing there, you're entering the conversation right here with who? Who are you talking to? Oh, is that the devil? God wants, if he's going to talk with you, he says, I want you to know that I want to do for you, listen, I want to do with you beyond what you can even imagine. Saying, oh gosh, Pastor Nate, you're just trying to hype me up. No, I'm telling you, this is what God said. These miracles that were done, they were done by his spirit. What you're looking for in life, Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 23, every bit of it, what everyone's looking for as you walk here on this earth, hey, walk with me, reminder, what people are looking for is going to be a product of the word implanted to them. And let me tell you, a lot of times people won't open up, right, if your life doesn't look like the picture as well. If I open the packet, all right, of seeds, and I look in there, and it's supposed to be watermelon, and everybody in here probably knows what a watermelon seed looks like. And you look down in there, and it's beet seeds. If you know what beet seeds look like, they're kind of like really irregular rounds. You're like, what in the world? They mixed up. I'm not planning that. There are a lot of times people will not receive what even the word that you would speak, right, if your life doesn't look like it. So God wants you to walk with him, but he wants you to walk with him. In other words, he wants, he wants your life to look like it, but he wants you to be able to carry and deposit that into their life because what you're looking for is what they're looking for. And the way it's found is by his spirit. Okay? Now, <clears throat> I want to talk about uh, how, what does it look like to receive what God has said? All right? Because really what we're talking, uh, what we're talking about is, is we're talking about the blessing this morning. I don't deserve the blessing. I know. I don't either. I didn't either. I don't. I don't deserve the blessing. But I can receive the blessing. What I deserve and what I receive is entirely up to me. If me res- I don't have, I, I, just because I don't deserve it doesn't mean I can't receive it. That's your choice. Has somebody ever given you a gift that you didn't deserve? You ever come home and you walk out, outside uh, and, and you see a grill on your back porch, a, 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 one of these flat iron deals, cooked uh, hibachi on it last night? <laughs> I didn't deserve it. Now, I wasn't thinking I deserved it. This person owes me this. And I came there and I was like, are you kidding me? You've got to be, who, what? I didn't deserve that. But I received it. But I received it. Are you going to receive what God says about you? It's interesting what we see here. Let's see verse 6. He says, even as Abraham believed God. Hmm. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. That's great. I'm glad he believed God. How many times did he believe God? How many times did he not believe God? But guess what? It's accounted to him. Like God's word will always supersede our performance. So what does God say about you? Man, faithful Abraham. What does he say about you? Righteous Chris. Righteous Joe. Righteous Jake. Righteous Mona. You know what that means? Right standing with me. What does he say about you? Because God's word will always supersede my performance. Always. So what is he saying about you? The the things that he says about uh, about you and me, I don't deserve. Right? The blessing, I don't deserve. But let me tell you, it's my choice whether or not to receive it or not. To tell, you're healed by his stripes. You're healed. I, I don't deserve it. I don't see it. Listen. Both those things can be true, but you can still receive it. You can still receive it. And you can trust, and by faith, you know what you can see? Miracles. Because what? Because you received it. Because the works of the Spirit are received where? In the heart. So you receive it here, and then it may manifest out here. So we talk about joy and peace and patience and all these kind of things. Those are things that we see 
uh, evidence of on the outside, but they're a work of the Spirit. And they're brought by receiving the word. Let me tell you, everything here in this life, he's given to you concerning your life and your life in him. He comes and speaks to you today about today, about what you need today and about what you need tomorrow. And some of these things where it says 90 to 120 days until harvest on the seed packet, you may not make sense to you. Some things grow quick, right? Some things have a delayed harvest, right? Some things you plant in the spring and you don't harvest until the first frost. Some things you plant in the spring and it pops up and it's spinach. Boom, you got a salad. <laughs> but some things, he, he, there is a, a delay, right? But he, it's by his, are you going to receive it? I'm receive it. I'm going I'm to receive it. I'm going to be good at receiving what he said. See, because when I receive what he says... When I only, my love is because he loved me. Even the works of sin in our life. I love because he loved me. My love will increase to the measure that I see his love for me. So maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe you've been going back to the tree over and over and over again. Let me tell you this. He loves you. And he still loves you. That's what I heard. He said, I love you. And I still love you. And I still love you. You know what that'll do? That'll cause your love and for him to grow. And when your love for him grows, you will defeat love. Never. Never. So grow in love. How? By receiving his love for you, by his word to you. Say, here's what he would tell you. As he walked with you, hey, walk with me. I love you. I love you, buddy. I, I got good plans for you. I love you so much. Hey, you know about that? Let me tell you something. Here's the thing when you enter a conversation with the Father. You find out about things that you didn't see. You ever enter a conversation with the Lord and now you have access or with just maybe a, your, your, your earthly father. And now you have access to things that you didn't, he, he presents things in a way. You said, Dad, I don't know what I'm going to do. Pretty much ruined my whole everything. And he said, hey, hey, bud, listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this, do this, do that, do that. And as you listen to your father, all of a sudden, okay, yeah, peace comes. Because you saw something that you didn't see. Same thing is true with your father. He'll, he'll show you things that you didn't see. And options that you didn't bring in. And so, <laughs> he says this. Even Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Uh, mm. Let's go to verse 10. For as many as are the works of the law, they're under the curse. I want to hit on this just for a moment, and then I want to hit on just a moment of the blessing. I don't have a whole lot of time. <clears throat> he would say, hey, um, what you did, I am, what, you, what you did is, is that's why you're, this is happening, right? Anybody, am I the only one that ever has battled that? So, like, raise your hand if you ever battled that. Well, this is because of that. Okay, so all of us have battled that. Because, because you struggled in this area, like, let's, make, let's say this. This has been one when I, would, I believe that I've heard what God has said, and I'm taking what he said over this, but I'm going to give you a, a, a glimpse into my life. Because I was in fourth grade and because, as a young man, I struggled with pornography, you know what, the, what has been prophesied to me? Or spoken to me over and over and over again, your kids are going to struggle with everything. They're going to be, you know, and I'm like, no, no. And you know what it said? Well, you shouldn't have sowed it. You shouldn't have sowed it. And you know what the Lord would remind you of? He'd remind you of Jesus who's redeemed us from the curse. Look, it says this. It says, for as many as are the works of the law that are still under the curse... He's going to say, hey, you are relying on the law. Oh, you, hey, buddy, buddy, in the church, hey, let's get back over 
Let's get back over to what God says about every situation. Listen, when you miss it, when you miss it, 1 John 1, 9, man, run to him. Run to him and say, God, I missed it. And he will do this. He'll wash you and he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And guess what? Then what will happen is your own heart won't condemn you because as long as your heart condemns you where faith is of the heart, faith won't work. Faith won't work as long as you are condemned because faith is of the heart. So what, what do you do? You run to him. You re- what does he say? You, you, even when you miss it, you, you miss it and you go by faith. I run back to him. And I don't put myself under the law. And when, when the enemy enters, enters, when I enter that con- or he starts talking to me about this and da 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 remember who you're talking to. And go back and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not under the law. I'm not under the law. I realized I couldn't live up to the law. I, and I still hold to the standard of what God says is truth. Right? It's doing that that allows me to be free. If I know the truth, if I make the truth my own, that's what enables freedom in my life. Let me keep going here real quick, and I'm going to wrap up with this because I just wanted to hit on this one word for, for our lives. <clears throat> um, it, it, talking about the blessing. He says, stay in verse 10. For as many as are, uh, as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continues, not in all the things which are written in the book of the law. That would make sure every one of us, right? Even on my best days, I'm, 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 I'm not good. You too. The problem is, even on our best day, a lot of times we think we're pretty good and we measure ourselves compared to others, right? Because we think we, we got it. Listen, the only thing you got is because Jesus came to you. And, and see, you know how he came to you? He found somebody to come to you. So let me ask you this. Could you just be that somebody that could come to somebody else? All right, um, verse 13. Oh, let's go back to verse 12. Sorry, I, I wish you had your Bibles. We could just read, I mean, some of you do. I mean, up here, I wish I could. It says, um, <laughs> verse 11. But then no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. No man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Like, he says, <clears throat> it is evident, for the, uh, the just shall live by faith. This is how you and I are to live, by what he says. Because faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing what God says. If I'm going to live by faith, I've got to hear what he says. If I hear what he says, what's possible to me is the impossible. Because with faith, nothing is impossible. So if he wants the just, hey, walk with me here on this earth. He wants us to live by faith. He wants us to be walking with access to that which is beyond our own ability, but tapping into him, all right? And so he says, the just shall live by faith, but the man that, uh, um, and the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. So again, he's reiterating here. If you want to be under the law, be under the law. If you want to be under faith, be under faith. In verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us. He's paid the price for that curse. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has paid the price. Let me just say that again. This is God's word to you. Christ has paid the price. And then it goes on to say this in the verse 29. Just, I don't have time. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon you. And I want to just talk for a moment or just take the last two minutes here and mention blessed. Blessed. I started this weekend thinking I was going to teach on walk, taking our paths and walking, you know, make checking where we're at. And I found myself, for some reason, in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Maybe you've never read that before. But in Galatians 3, verse 29, it says that the blessings of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, right? This is where we would go and we'd see all these blessings, verses basically 1 through 14. We just would see all that God has in store for us. And then it follows by a bunch of verses talking about the curse. I just, I found that so many times our path 
is determined by the words we're listening to. My path. Hey Siri, take me to Chick-fil-A. In 400 feet, turn right. My path is determined by the words I listen to. You know what I've heard? Is we are listening to the wrong words so many times. And the reason we're listening to them is this is the most simple, the most simple truth. And, and, and actually the definition of bless or blessed is this. It means to kneel. It's barak. It means to kneel. You look it up. Go look at it. It just simply means to kneel. Be positioned to receive is what, if you were to break that down. So you know what it says? If you listen, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, if you would listen to what God has to say and diligently listen, this is kind of like Hebrews 11, 6. Faith comes by listening. If you just listen and you just listen diligently, what he's saying Faith would come, and you'd realize that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hey, what do you got to say today, Lord? What do you got to say today? You know why I find out, look for what he's got to say? Because I want to be blessed. Why? What does that mean? I want to come under. I want to be positioned to receive. That's what it means. To, he says these blessings, that's the, that's the thing that would be given, blessings, these good things. He said, Blessed will you be in the city. You know what that means? It means to be, literally means to kneel. Blessed means to kneel. Position to receive. It means I'm going to be blessed to receive in the city. I'm going to be positioned to receive today. I'm going to be positioned to receive in my bank account. Because I heard what God said. Because I came under what he said as truth. Because I chose, I had the ability to receive what he said, even if... It didn't feel right. I have the ability to choose what he says because his word reigns supreme, period. Yeah, but I like sleeping with this one even though I'm married to this one. I like this. Listen, what does his word say? You want your marriage to be blessed. Come under. Yeah, but I've already done this. Listen, listen, listen. I understand all that you've done. I get that. But would you just come under and let God do Would you just come under, would you receive again by his spirit what he says and live by faith and let God do something? Blessed will you be in the city. Thank you, Father. Because I found out what he said about my business. Oh, blessed will I be in the field when no one else is around. When my things are growing and it doesn't seem, Father, thank you. My bank account, oh, thank you, Lord, that you said. I see that, that's what you said, and he spoke to me. Oh, thank you, Father. Bless while I be here. And bless this. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm positioned to receive that. What are you positioned to receive today? Let me ask you that. What are you positioned to receive today? Get in position. You know how? Walk with me. Find out what I'm saying. Find out what I'm saying. Why? Because he needs you and me to walk with him. Amen? Amen. Let's just pray before we uh, receive our tithes and offerings. And land and can come. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for sending Jesus, your son. You know, I've just sensed this feel strong in my heart. If you just need to repent this morning, just right here, right now, right where you're at in your chair, with your eyes, uh, bow your head and close your eyes and just talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I, I repent. I confess my my sins to you, I confess to this, and you just tell them. Just tell them. He says, he'll wash you and he'll cleanse you. So Father, I thank you right now that even now, here in this congregation, as we just say to you how we've missed it, thank you for the work of your spirit, washing us and cleansing us because of the blood of Jesus. And I thank you for hearts and consciences that are not guilty and not spotted, but are pure, for, pure before you. And I thank you that today they hear and that we hear how much we're loved by you. In Jesus' name.